Now, Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to shift gears again and ask you about the period in April and May of 2016. If you could please let us know, uh, as of April 2016, what was the state of your mother's health? Um, excuse me. Mom had been, um, she had been in the hospital uh, for quite some time and uh, like a long steady pace from November. So by April she was, uh, we knew that she was um, towards the end of her life. So um, that's what April basically was, and it went into May. <clears throat> In May, we gathered everybody to come say goodbye to her. How often, if at all, did you visit your mother in April 2016? She was in the hospital, so I was, I was with her pretty much every day. I was a 24-7 when I wasn't, uh, you know, at, at the office or something, you know. Did you ever see Johnny at the hospital? Yes. How often did Johnny, did you see Johnny at the hospital in April 2016? I don't know how often I saw him. I mean, he, he would come and see her, you know, regularly. Um, even before that, when there was a period we were trying to uh, help her communicate and he, you know, brought in, you know, different type tools, uh, pens, pencils, you know, uh, drawing, crayons, just to try to help her uh, communicate. He, he came as often as he could. He was, he was there quite a bit. And when you said you called the family together in May, would you please explain what you meant? Um, we were told by, uh, by the doctors that uh, mom was at a point where there was nothing else um, that we could uh, do for her. And um, so that we should start calling anybody that wanted to, you know, come and, and uh, you know, spend a little bit of time and say their goodbyes. So we did that. Um, we did that in May. But, and, and moving ahead to May 19, mm -hmm. 2016, what was your mother's condition that day? She was she was basically in a coma. She was medicated and uh, and, and just on uh, machines, uh, life support, where it was you know slowly going away on May 19th. How, how do you know that? I I was with her. Did you see uh, your brother in the hospital that day? Yes. What happened the next day, May 20th, 2016? Well, mom, mom passed away that morning. Um, we had had all the family was there. Johnny was there with his kids um, until the wee morning hours of May, you know, uh, May 20th. Um, my kids, uh, my sister, we were all there spending our last bits of time. and. Uh, Everybody else had gone home, um, and uh, Mom passed away probably a few hours after that, maybe five, six hours after that. Who was with your mother when she passed? Uh, I was. Who, if anyone, told Johnny that your mother had passed? Sorry. Take, take your time. Um, I did. I I, um, I called him and I called my um, our other siblings to tell them. And I'm sorry. I know this is painful. Um, how did Johnny react when you told him that your mother had passed? Well, he was uh, he was sad, but there was a also there's a a relief that you know suffering is is done. So. He was mostly trying to make sure that I was okay and I was going to uh, leave and not stay there and, um, you know, sort of take on everything uh, by myself. 
So we asked about how you were doing. Oh, yes, that became quite a big topic. Yes. Ms. Dombrowski, did you see Johnny the next day, Saturday, May 21, 2016? I did. Um, I had, I had uh, I'd gone to uh, his house the, the night we lost mom. I think we all kind of gathered our children, right? And I had, I had my sister with me, so I had driven her back on the Saturday. And we were going to go to the funeral home, so I was, uh, while I was waiting for her, I, I went to go check on Johnny and uh, see if he was okay and wanted to go. And did you check on Johnny Saturday morning, the 21st? Yes, yes, I, I went I went to see him um, because he was, we had talked about maybe he would also go to, to the funeral home. But um, when I got there, he seemed, he seemed upset because he and Amber had been fighting. Um, what else happened when you first met with your brother on the morning of the 21st when you were talking about going to the funeral home? I just, I, I, I went to go see if he was going to go with us. I got there. He was upset. <clears throat> Excuse me, because they were fighting. Um, I got upset because of the day that was chosen to fight. Um, but I, I went ahead and left and went to the, uh, to the funeral home with my sister and then came back that evening. Why were you upset about their fighting on that day in particular? Our, our, we had just lost our mom the day before. So I, I feel like that, you know, there might be the need for a little compassion, no fighting on that day. Did Johnny end up going with you to the funeral home that day? No, I went ahead and, and went, um, and he was he was gathering his stuff because he, he had to go pick up some items because he was going to go on tour. Did you see Johnny again that day once you left him to go to the funeral home? <laughs> Yeah, I, I came back um, that evening. I came back. Uh, I was taking care of my sister for a bit, and then um, before I left to go home, I stopped at his house to make sure that he was okay, you know, um, and I saw him then. And what happened when you went over to see that he was okay? He was... Uh, he was talking to a couple of people. I, I, you know, I saw him briefly. He, he seemed to be all right. And um, I spoke to Jerry Judge, and uh, they had they had just come back from um, him picking up items down at um, at the downtown at the loft. So when you uh, met him the second day that time. Strike that. When you met him the second time that day on May 21, did you meet with him at his Sweetser house or at the ECB? No, I went to the Sweetser house. He had gone down to um, the the Pentos to pick up some of his stuff uh, because he was going to be leaving, you know, to go on on tour. Um, and uh, I just stopped by after, after they had just gotten back. And as of that time, the evening of May 21, your mother had just passed, what plans, if any, had been made for a funeral service for your mother? We, we hadn't made any plans for a funeral service. Um, we wanted to wait until we could get, you know, all the friends and family, because we weren't expecting the date necessarily. Um, but we wanted to wait till we can get all friends and family to come together to have more of a like a dinner, like a celebration, like mom would want at her favorite place. So we, we waited, we decided to schedule it like a month or so out instead of immediate. 
So you had referred uh, to your brothers having plans to go on tour mm -hmm. that next week, obviously not knowing that his mother was going to pass. Right. Um, what, if any other formal events had been planned for that next week before he was going on tour? Well, he was, he had a, um, he had the premiere for um, Alice that was on the Monday night. Um, Mom passed on Friday, um, and the premiere was Monday night. Um, and then he was going to take a flight after that, immediately after uh, the premiere. He had to get on a plane to go to New York to, you know, to, to meet the band and go on to Europe. And when you say Alice, just so the jury may understand, if you could please explain to them what Alice is. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alice, uh, and, and I'm so sorry right now. It, uh, I don't know if it's, it's Alice Through the Looking Glass, maybe was that one's name, or the Alice in Wonderland Disney series, where he played uh, Hatter. And so that, pr that premiere for Alice in Wonderland was going to be on Monday. And what day was Mr. Depp planning to go on tour with his music band? He had to be there Tuesday morning. He, he, um, so we, we had to schedule it. It was very tight. We scheduled a, a, a plane for him immediately after the premiere. He would get on the plane. Um, so he was expected to leave on Tuesday. So how long was he supposed to be on tour? I, I believe it was a couple of months, something like that. Going back to the premiere, how, if at all, did your mother's passing affect the premiere of Alice in Wonderland? We didn't, we didn't let anybody know that mom had passed away. We kept that really close um, to just our, you know, just family and friends. Uh, because he, because he had to go do the premiere, and with the premiere, he's on the the carpet, and on the carpet, he does a lot. He does interviews, and it didn't feel right um, on many levels to have him where people knew that mom had passed away, and um, while he's trying to do interviews to, to sort of, you know, give their condolences and their sympathies and all of that. So we, we kind of kept it just with us so that it wouldn't become a, you know, a, a, a worldwide thing and he could just do what he was supposed to do and do his job. And Did you think he could handle hearing all that sympathy at the premiere? I, I didn't think he should handle. I didn't think I thought I thought it would be very hard on him, you know. I, I it would be very hard question after question and condolences. And did there come a time when Miss Heard filed for divorce from your brother? Yes. When was that? I learned. I learned that she had filed on the Tuesday morning, um, after that premiere of the Tuesday morning, I was at the funeral home and I got a call from um, the attorney to let me know that she had filed. Where was Johnny when you learned that Ms. Heard had filed for divorce? He was, he was already in New York and getting ready to travel to Europe for the tour. How did you react initially when you heard from Mr. Duff's attorney that Ms. Heard had filed for divorce? I mean, I think understandably, you know, I, 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 the timing of this, um, it made me Sick, actually, it, it it really made me feel ill. It made me sad, frustrated. I don't, I don't, I can't even find the word to describe um, 
how I felt when I heard that the divorce was filed the day after, you know, at, while I'm at the funeral home. You didn't think the timing of Ms. Hurd's filing was appropriate? I, I, I did not. I thought, I thought it would, I, I thought something like that might, might have been able to wait. Did there come a time when you learned that Ms. Hurd had also filed for a restraining order against Johnny? Yes. Yes, I think I heard that also from the attorney. I believe, I believe the day before, um, she was, I, I think I, it was a Thursday, I think. I learned that one. So this was two days after your brother had left for New York? Yes. Yes, because I was shocked at that. At that. I was shocked at that um, and concerned that he was out of town and didn't know if he needed to be there. He was gone, you know. Um, and, and I was asking the attorney, and they said, no, he doesn't have to be there. No one has to be there. Amber won't be there. No one will be there. Just attorneys. It's a very simple process. Did Johnny attend the restraining order hearing? No, he was not in town. He wasn't in the country. Did you see any press coverage of the restraining order hearing? Yes, I did. Would you please tell the jury what you saw or read? Objection calls for hearsay. Not asking for the proof of what was in the articles. It's a present sense impression. It's relevant. Why is it relevant? All right, I'll sustain it to hearsay and relevance. Okay. Did you see press, was there press coverage of the hearing? There was a tremendous amount of press coverage. Did you read any of it? I did, I did, I did read some of it. I did, you know, I saw some of it. Putting aside the truth or falsity of what you saw, what did you see? Relevance. What, why is that relevant? And hearsay. Was the... Right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. How did you feel when you read the press? Relevance. How the witness felt was irrelevant. What's the relevance? I think it... I think it's relevant to her testimony, Your Honor, but I can move on. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. 